I'm Stuart Langdon, I'm a partner of the firm and I'm co-head of our Asia financial services business. So when LeapFrog started, there were huge barriers to serving emerging consumers. The banks and insurance companies at the time were not interested in that group. They didn't believe that you could build a group, a good positive business model by serving that group of consumers because they thought they were too low income, too bad risks. And on top of that, emerging consumers typically didn't have the type of documentation or the type of credit history that those organizations needed. And over time, that led to millions of people right across Asia and Africa being excluded from the formal financial services system with all sorts of negative consequences as a result. The first wave of digital financial services that we worked on was delivered over typically a, a very basic mobile phone, typically a, a feature phone, uh, the old Nokias that, that used to prevail in the emerging markets. And we were able to make a lot of positive innovations in that time, so for example, uh, we were able to split uh, loan repayments and insurance premiums into much smaller amounts which really helped emerging consumers uh, and we were able to build credit histories and insurance histories by using the data in the mobile phone to help uh, financial services providers really understand consumers but it was only really with the advent of the smartphone uh, and the way that smartphone penetration started to really scale from around 2016 2017 onwards that, that really it became possible to offer emerging consumers a much better experience and our portfolio companies have really taken advantage of that opportunity and nowadays are able to deliver app-based services to our customers that far outstrip what we were able to do back then. Um, digital credit scores for example using people's mobile data to provide a, a credit profile for them is a game changer in providing loans. It means that banks and other institutions who hadn't been able to serve that group before because they didn't have formal credit histories, suddenly they're able to provide loan capital and that allows people to get a start in life, it allows them to build a business or buy their own home or buy some kind of livelihood asset uh, which, which you know, has a huge effect on their lives. In addition to that, as we come into this energy transition that the world needs to go through and as more and more low-income consumers start to access green services and products like EVs or they want to put solar home systems uh, on their roofs, um, digital payment histories are a vital part of that. It's very hard to have the energy transition in these countries unless you provide people with the kinds of loans they need to buy uh, these kind of assets. Uh, and so the kind of credit histories we've helped our customers to build and the ability to pay as you go using digital payments, that's hugely important. It would have been very hard to provide EVs in India or Africa or to provide people with solar home systems if you couldn't allow them to repay uh, on a digital platform over a period of time. I think the AI revolution will be really important for us as well. I think the robots and machines will do a much better job of understanding emerging consumers probably than people have historically. And because emerging consumers have such big data footprints on their mobile phones, I think there'll be big opportunities. Nowadays, we have a great many very innovative companies in the portfolio, really going right across uh, InsureTech, where we have Pazarpolis, Bima, Insurance Deco. Uh, we have uh, lending businesses like Rupee, uh, and also payments players on the platform, uh, people like Zeps, uh, Interswitch and so on. So really right across lending, insurance and payments we've got um, a number of very impressive digital businesses that are very quickly acquiring market share.